deep in the shadows I know it's hard to put one foot in front of the other ah. hi guys welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel my name is Cecilia but I go by the name C Chronicles across all my social media platforms on this particular platform I focus mostly on a Middle Eastern fragrance reviews and if you like that style of content but you're not yet subscribed, please guys do consider subscribing and joining the family. To those who are returning, thank you so much for the continued support. As seen on today's video guys, the title is What a Surprise. A surprise, a shocking surprise from the company Latafa itself. I started talking about this company Latafa a long, long time ago, right? Which was 2019 to date. And uh, it is now uh, that I have some news coming from Latafa that I wanna talk about. But before then, guys, I feel I need to address certain issues because I do not want this particular video to be taken out of context. Uh, and I want to make sure that we're on the same page. Uh, reason why I'm gonna address this and I hope you stick around with me till the very end is because if I start with the good news, most of you are gonna click out before I get to the most important part. The video that I watched uh, a few weeks ago, or maybe let me say, I'm just gonna put it about 10, 12 days ago, uh, that was done by a fellow uh, fragrance uh, reviewer, right? Her name is Claire. And that video was uh, pointing out 13 points uh, of why you should not uh, trust fragrance reviewers. I did agree with a couple of points, but there were so many points that I did not agree with. And uh, the reason why I am putting this out first before talking about this is because one, she said you should not trust fragrance reviewers. So I am one fragrance reviewer. I know the video was not directed at me specifically, but it covers my genre. And I feel because of that, I need to dispel some of the things, you know, uh, that were in that particular video, not that they contain or oh, they are specific to me, but because they are just a generalization. There was a lot of points in that video that were not objective. By this, I mean, uh, she seemed to be relaying some of her personal uh, thoughts and then using an umbrella term to uh, imply that they apply to everybody in the fragrance review industry. Now I'm gonna go point by point. I've got a book here, but um, I don't want the camera to zoom on the book. Uh, the book is for me to just reference some of the points because I, I wanna make sure that this does not take an eternity as I said before. Number one, she said, uh, if you see a fragrance reviewer talking about a certain brand all the time, it means they are sponsored, it probably means they're a sales rep. It probably means they have affiliate links. It probably means they have, uh, what did she call it? Uh, that they're on paid promotions and stuff like that. In my particular case, that is different, right? I have these books from the Tafa guys, these uh, four booklets. And these are not limited to what Latafa has brought us to date. They are just some of the books that uh, Latafa or legal pamphlets that Latafa decided to throw in when they actually started putting some of the pamphlets in their fragrances just to make sure that people familiarize with what they, the fragrances contain. So this was the very first pamphlet that I saw from Latafa. When I started my channel in 2019, December, that is when I started my YouTube channel. I posted a couple of fragrances there, dropped the very first video, if you go to my very first video, uh, was about Middle Eastern fragrances. It had nothing to do with Latafa. It was just the fragrances that I had, which I had actually bought off somebody off Facebook. And I was one person that did not know about clones or dupes or something like that. I knew there were knockoffs out there, but I did not know that there were some companies that were particularly dedicated to cloning fragrances. And as shocking or as it sounds, I didn't even know Zara was one of those companies. So I came across this company called Latafa, bought a couple of fragrances from somebody. And after buying those fragrances, there was so many, there was some of, you know, fragrances that I would smell there that I thought, oh, I kind of think I've smelled this before, you know, so that's how it started. And then as I was posting, just, you know, for the sake of, uh, making sure that I feed my hobby because I do love, you know, fragrances a lot. I grew up loving fragrances. My mother was a fragrance uh, fanatic herself. She was an enthusiast. Uh, I was actually, uh, I remember as one of her parting gifts, she gave me a little pouch that had fragrances. Uh, she's late now. So I started talking about fragrances and talking about fragrances and I'll talk about Itafa 
Go online, search Latafa. There was nothing there about Latafa. I literally used to take a bottle like this, put it sometimes on top of my fridge or on top of a cupboard, take a picture there, and then use that as a thumbnail. I have since revisited those videos and edited you know, the thumbnails and the, the pictures that I was inserting there because there was no information about Latafa, right? Um, now, am I trying to pet my back and put credit on Latafa or whatever? No, what I'm trying to say is go back to this thing where she says, if you see somebody talking about a brand all the time, it means they're sponsored, it means they have affiliate links, it means they're, they're sales rep. I did that, not that I was sponsored, not that I was a sales rep. There's something called attraction. If you create your YouTube channel and uh, maybe you create it by coincidence just because you got the phone, like she said, she said, I don't trust you, uh, reviewers because anybody who's got a phone can be a reviewer or anyone who's got a phone can be a YouTuber. That's very true. But there's a difference with certain people. This is why I said it was not objective. It was more subjective. It was her thoughts reflecting her thoughts on other people. Um, one might start a fragrance review channel or any channel because they just want to or they maybe have a lot of time on their hands but tell you what unless you are not wired properly upstairs there if your channel grows unexpectedly or your channel is bringing people you know there watching because they feel you make sense you tend to start improving on certain things and certain things and certain things and you will align with what your audience wants. It's nothing to do with sponsorships. The way things work, especially in Africa, being an African child, staying in Africa, being a reviewer in Africa is very, very different from uh, Europe. And guys, before you think I'm about to slag anyone who's sponsored or anything like that, I just want you to follow through what I'm saying. You know, being from Africa, I am one from Africa, two, I'm from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a country that is sanctioned. The way things work here are so different from the way things work even in South Africa and in other neighboring countries. For instance, it's not easy to move money. For instance, if I wanted a paid sponsorship or uh, affiliate links, I wouldn't be able to get that money to myself, which is the reason why I actually even ended up creating PayPal because PayPal was one of the easiest ways of getting support on my channel. Um, we don't have super thanks as an option. South Africa has super thanks. Zimbabwe doesn't have super thanks as an option. We don't have buy me a coffee. We don't have uh, Patreon, you know. That is because I am from Zimbabwe, right? So talking about one brand over and over again is one, it was the accessibility two, the quality of their fragrances three, the fact that those fragrances bring traction. I'm not gonna lie that Latafa, the company, the fragrances bring traction to my channel. I'm not gonna lie about the fact that Latafa has done a lot of homework in accessibility for their products. What's the point in me pushing something that I know is not going to be accessible to other people out there, right? My demographics, have got that to show. I'm gonna see if I can try and put a clip there, you know, where my channel's audience is not even in Africa. My demographics are United States, UK, Australia, Canada, all those countries, nothing to do with Africa. The only African country uh, that supports or that I've seen on my demographics is Nigeria as well as South Africa. Other than that, it's mostly Europe, okay? Now, so having said that point, I just wanted to make it clear, guys, because remember I, I told you we've got good news here, but I need to address that less it gets mixed up and lost in translation. Another point that she said, uh, she, 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 she put out there was uh, the fact that if you see a channel growing, it means, you know, people are buying or there are apps or something like that. I'm not disputing the fact that some people could be doing that, but I wanna speak for myself. The thing with YouTube is this, YouTube is unpredictable. You cannot tell or, you know, I see people opening or, or I see people having master classes and, uh, you know, talking about, oh, how to grow your channel, how to whatever, whatever. 
I also used to listen to those. I also used to spend my time concentrating, you know, when I was smaller, concentrating, oh no, do this, do that, be consistent, do this. Let me tell you about YouTube, it's got no formula. This is just a, an app that's run by a bot or whatever it is. There is no formula. I could come here and talk about this fragrance, right? A fragrance that another YouTuber will come and talk about. Mine gets zero views, another reviewer gets a million views. That's YouTube for you. So there is no formula to say, oh, if you see a channel, a channel growing fast, it means there's something that someone is doing. I'll give an example of a very same video uh, that uh, Dr. Claire put out there. That video is growing and it keeps going. How then does she justify that? Because if you look at the statistics, like if you go on her page and you look at the statistics of the other videos, how they've been performing, they probably haven't been performing that that well, you know, and then whoop, she does that video and it goes viral. That's YouTube for you. Now, would it be fair for somebody to come here and say, tell you what, uh, if somebody puts out a video there and uh, uh, they've been having uh, very low views and all of a sudden uh, their video blows, it means they've bought views. It wouldn't be fair. It even went on, uh, there was something to imply that somebody, if somebody grows fast, then there's something that they're doing. Not necessarily. You could put out content there that will have a lot of people interested in and a lot of people feel they must subscribe to your channel. It doesn't mean that you bought them overnight. Now, I wanna see in future whether if her channel, and I hope for that, that her channel you know, blows up. If it blows up, I wanna see whether she will come and then just, it's, you know, explain uh, or feel the need to say the same thing. This is why I'm saying it touches or it kind of triggered me in a way because I felt I've been working. <laughs> I don't want to use any whatever, whatever word. I work flat out, you know, uh, in this thing, making sure that I post content after content after content, you know, to grow and stuff like that. And then somebody comes in there and throws a shadow of doubt to people to say, oh, if you see, don't trust anybody with more than uh, 20,000 subscribers. That is so subjective because at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that anybody who's got 20, 50, 80, 100, 1 million subscribers has bought subscribers. It doesn't work like that. And Saying that, I'm so happy she actually dropped a site there called, uh, she said, Social Blade. Guys, if you have any doubt about anyone who's doing anything on YouTube, it doesn't even have to be fragrance reviews, anything at all, whether it's vlogs or whatever, go to that Social Blade. I haven't personally gone there because I don't feel the need to be all up in people's business. I haven't gone there, but go on there, check. Since there is a site that will tell you who's buying, who's not buying, who's buying views, who's not buying. Uh, you know, it was a good thing that she actually pointed that out. But why I felt the need to speak is because if you use an umbrella term, you have people giving a side eye and thinking, mm, yet some of us started this thing as a passion and then it took off. We may have started even at the same time. You might start yesterday, blow up faster than myself. I may have started 10 years ago and still be knowing. That's just how YouTube is. It's got no formula. So using an umbrella term that, oh, if somebody's growing, it means they're doing something. I don't think it's a very scholarly way of looking at things. I'm a scholar myself, and that's why I like also evidence-based you know, information. Whatever she, she had to say shouldn't have been a one size fits all. It's okay to speak your mind, but do not make it an umbrella term, whether for views or whatever it is, and then rack everybody in. Because it's not everybody that has you know that depth of thought that is going to analyze things as they are some people look at it and like hmm, for sure nobody is forced to click on anybody's channel let people be let those who are growing grow let those who are whatever do whatever if YouTube feels the need to put or push your videos out there it will uh, having said that let's say let me go to the next point which was about um, I've spoken about affiliate links oh yeah what about affiliate links let me say this I started uh, my YouTube journey. I'm just taking off my flip flops, guys. I started my YouTube journey and uh, my channel started growing gradually, right? Remember, I'm a self funded YouTuber. I buy each and every fragrance. If a company comes to me today and says, We would like to sponsor you, we would like to give you an affiliate link. Not that it applies to me, like I told you that I'm in a country where even if I wanted that, it's really not possible. Or the, 
uh, dynamics of doing it is not possible. But I can see how anybody who has a lot of subscribers would be so happy to have an affiliate link or whatever, because is it feasible to buy each and every fragrance that a company has ever made? I personally have bought all these myself. I'm telling you the truth. The only fragrances I was gifted was one from Dubai Perfume Cafe, which was the one with the horns. I got gifted uh, fragrances by Paris Corner. I think it was 10 or so of them. They came from the UK. Those are the only fragrances that have ever been gifted, except of course, what we're gonna get into with this video. So for somebody to slag anyone with affiliate links or whatever and say, oh, because if you, if you, if you have affiliate links, then you're biased. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. There's no logic in that. The thing is, it depends on the actual reviewer. It now goes back to integrity. Does this person have integrity enough to know that, okay, I got this from the Tafa, but guys, I do not like it. It's too smoky. Do you understand what I'm saying? So again, to say, oh, if you see anybody with affiliate links and whatever, uh, be, be wary because they're getting uh, 10 pounds for every bottle or something like that, no, guys, I think. I mean, honestly, this is why I was triggered. Uh, but then moving on, uh, she referenced a Fragrantica. That's another nice one. Now, with regards to Fragrantica, what is Fragrantica? Fragrantica is a platform uh, that puts uh, fragrances out there. It's a database for fragrances, okay? And what they do is they will put the uh, notes like this. Not all the notes are always correct, okay? They'll put notes like this. And I'm gonna say even companies sometimes do not put notes, you know, accurately. They will just make sure that they throw you off here and there. So she said, um, people go on Fragrantica and they, 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 they just go and copy paste things on Fragrantica and then they come here and they say, oh, this and this and this and this. Granted, yes, it's true. Uh, people go on Fragrantica, but that is a fragrance database, right? There are two things when it comes to Fragrantica. Grantica. I'm gonna speak for myself. There's nothing wrong with referencing Fragrantica. Any of my fellow reviewers, if you're referencing Fragrantica, there's nothing wrong with that. But just make sure that you use Fragrantica as your reference point to research, to do your own research, right? As a scholar, that is how it is. I went to varsity. You will have to reference somebody's work. I don't understand why somebody would have a problem with anybody referencing Fragrantica, especially if they're then going to use their own information after that. Now, what does Fragrantica say? If Fragrantica says this one has got mango, right? I didn't make this fragrance. Fragrantica says it's got mango or the Tafa says it's got mango. Am I smelling mango? That's the question. And I think that's the most important part. So instead of slagging a platform and saying people are going there to get information and then paste it on their channels, I think it's a very wrong way of looking at it. You've got to have a reference point. Now the question is, after you've checked with the reference point, does it make sense with you? Another thing when it comes to myself, now I'm speaking independently here. I'm not, the first point about Fragrantica was for everybody else. This is how I do my research. When I started my uh, fragrance uh, review journey, it was a passion, I loved fragrances. Will I say I knew everything? No, I did not know everything, right? But because this platform was a platform that received me so well, I had to stop and think, wait, I need to put some work in this. I need to study this. I need to do my research on this. And I started with oils, essential oils. I bought my jasmine oil, bought my lavender oil, mint, okay? Uh, I bought my uh, cloth oil. I bought my uh, patchouli oil. I could name all the notes you can think of, sandalwood oil. That personally I did because from a scholarly point of view, I wanted to know what does sandalwood smell like? Okay, what does it smell like? Now, if I tell you uh, sandalwood or patchouli smells like earth, it smells like it's green, it's like this. And coincidentally, that is what Fragrantica says, right? That is because that's exactly what it is. 
You see what I mean? Because there's gotta be a reference point. So there's no way any one of us will be able to know just by receiving a bottle, because to me that is what it suggested, that just by receiving this, don't check anything else, don't cross check anything else, because then it means you're just copy pasting. You just receive this fragrance, you do this, okay? Spray it like this. This has guava, but offset, the guava in here, I'm gonna tell you, is giving off something like a uh, detergent. So am I supposed to come and say, hmm, kind of feels like, uh, uh, what do you call it, that washing detergent. And then it feels like, what happens with platforms like uh, Fragrantica, guys, is once you buy a fragrance like this, or just like Latafa has been giving us pamphlets, you will cross-check with that pamphlet, right? And because you're familiar or you have a certain uh, essential oil or whatever, you will cross-check. If you don't have essential oils, you will cross-check. Am I actually getting the guava that they're saying is guavering in this? Do you get my point? So I just felt the need, guys, to come and, uh, and dispel some of those thoughts and whatever it is. And I just felt the need to come with my counter reaction to say, guys, it's not all set in stone. You know, uh, unless, of course, you are a fragrance uh, expert. Say, for instance, you are um, Quentin Bish. You studied uh, fragrances and all. You want to know everything. But if you are just like myself, you're a fragrance enthusiast, you've got like maybe 50 fragrances on your dresser and you feel, oh, okay, I think I could say one or two things about fragrances. I'm going to click on my camera there and start talking about fragrances. You are going to need a reference point. After which, say for instance, you were doing it because you just have a phone, like what Dr. Claire said, and it so happens that your channel grows is it not common sense that you're gonna take it seriously? There are so many angles to this thing. It's not a one size fits all where anybody who's growing is because they're being sponsored. Those people that have a following, a real following, actually have people who have minds who decide to say, I'm gonna follow this channel because maybe this channel makes sense. You know, I'm gonna follow this person because maybe their vlogs make sense, you know. Uh, so lastly, maybe just to make sure that, uh, or maybe I just put two more points, okay? I am one person who believes in 100% transparency because I buy each and everything that I've ever gotten here except for the Paris Corner Parcel and that one fragrance from uh, Dubai, Dubai Perfume Cafe. When I came with this particular one, this one, this was not, these fragrances were not gifted to me, you know. It was actually embarrassing to say, oh, they've borrowed me these fragrances to talk about them and I've returned them the next day. I just thought it was unnecessary for people to know that. So I came with the first Latifa Pride collection. I said, oh, I've been gifted. I had not been gifted. The shop itself knows that. They are called SA Cash and Carry. They simply said, we've got the new Latifa Pride collection. You can come and get a couple of them, review them and bring them back to us. That's how things work here. We don't get gifted. We don't get freebies. You know, it's only now that I'm going to say I am open to freebies if anybody wants to, you know, send. As long as they're okay with sending to Dubai, as long as they're okay with sending to South Africa. UK is okay. The problem I have with UK is the six week waiting period because I can only ship fragrances from the UK uh, via, via sea. So there's a six week uh, waiting period. But if any Middle Eastern company wants to reach out to me, I am very open to that. I'm not going to judge anybody who does that because as soon as your, 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 your channel gets a lot of viewership, you will see it yourself, guys, that it's not practical to buy each and every bottle. I even got to an extent of taking my tail and putting it in between my uh, thighs and saying, guys, if you want, you could PayPal me. I had to put my pride aside. It's not practical to buy each and every bottle, especially if you're relying only on AdSense. What is AdSense? AdSense is when people click and watch a video and hopefully watch it to the end. That's AdSense for you. That's how you get paid as a YouTuber. Now, how many people who watch an advert and just can't wait for that skip part so that they hear what the reviewer is saying? So I personally would not have any problem or find it uh, needful to come and advise people against watching anybody who's been sponsored. Because at the end of the day, it's not practical. Fragrance reviewing is expensive. To be honest, whether you're doing dupes, whether you're doing originals, fragrance reviews are expensive. And it doesn't make sense to review things that people do not care for. 
another reason why I actually opened a second channel because I wanted to split my content. I opened my second channel for the sake of putting vlogs, some, you know, my daily life, uh, for the purpose of putting uh, Western fragrance reviews. Why? Because my channel took a direction where people who love Middle Eastern fragrances are comfortable with. And because I'm not sponsored, I keep bringing those Middle Eastern fragrances because they're the ones that actually get a little bit of traction in terms of adverts. So to be brandished as, oh, if somebody talks about a certain uh, whatever, for the longest time it means it's being sponsored, no, that is not true. I, I even know of a fellow reviewer who talks mostly about Zara, you know, and we know Zara does not send any uh, merch to anybody. If they do, I don't know, but I don't, I've never seen anybody saying, oh, Zara has gifted me this. But why does she talk about Zara? It's because Zara is the company that brings traction to her channel. And is it feasible or sensible to just walk away from all these numbers that are growing just because people are gonna think you're buying them? People are gonna think you're sponsored. It doesn't make sense. It only makes sense that you're going to go with what people want. So I am one example of that person that actually opened a second channel because I've taken this particular one, C Chronicles Talking Sense, as work. This is my workplace. We can play anywhere else. And I even remember telling you guys that if Unscripted takes a direction where people just want me to review fragrances, I'm going to do that. I'm going to just take it to that direction where if people want me to review just Western fragrances, I'm going to do that because it's pointless to invest so much time to put out stuff that's going to make you nothing. In Africa, we don't have loans. We don't have credit facilities, we don't have nothing. So what would be the point in investing all this time putting out video after video after video, editing, you know, a 10 minute video can take you two, three hours editing it just for nothing. So it's whether, one, whether people want to call it money driven or whatever, it's not really about that. And zoom in on PayPal, I owe you guys a part two because I believe in transparency, I believe in, uh, I believe in evidence-based facts. I'm going to bring you a part two uh, of the whole of PayPal. The reason why I haven't bought that is I haven't withdrawn anything from PayPal. I opened that PayPal specifically for this channel, specifically, and right now we're on 300. Reason why I haven't taken that money is if I'm to take out the exchange, uh, what you call it, the transfer fees and everything like that, it ends up being 200 and something. So it hasn't been enough for me to come here and bring you a part two of the PayPal issue. So I just wanted to make sure that guys, we get that start, uh, out of the way. And I'm really sorry if it has eaten into the time that was actually meant to uh, put shine on, uh, you know, on, on this tougher surprise that I got. And then uh, just to make sure that things are not taken back to front because I wanted people to know since 2019, I've been talking about the tough. I'm not gonna stop talking about Middle Eastern fragrances, sponsored or not. This, as well as this, the very first package. Ever since I opened my channel in 2019, Latafa reached out to me uh, in January. I'm gonna put the conversation between me and Latafa. They reached out to me in January 20, January or February 2024. And even as they did, I wasn't sure it was them. You know, I thought mm, maybe it's somebody else, you know, because um, I've had, oh yeah, it's, that's one point that I'd actually, I'd actually forgot. When they reached out to me, I'm not that active on Instagram, guys. My Instagram is one thing that blew up when I opened it in 2016. One, because I am somewhat of a famous person in my own country, right? So I have all these numbers, but I had to stole that Instagram because I had one deranged stalker, you know, that was creating account after account after account after, just to get to my Instagram account. So when Latafa actually reached out to me on Instagram, I wasn't actually sure whether it was them. I thought, well, maybe it one of, it's one of those pranks from the, uh, from the stalkers. And it is also another thing that triggered me about this Dr. Clay, uh, you know, uh, video where she said, oh, if you go on other platforms, as long as you see somebody with more numbers uh, and, and people that do not align with the, what they're posting on their pages, it means they're buying followers. Not necessarily. That doesn't mean that. You know, I opened my account with no idea that I would be a fragrance reviewer one day. I'm talking about Instagram now. I opened that account with no idea I would wake up a fragrance reviewer one day. It was only later, you know, when I became a fragrance reviewer that 
you know, I had to attach or I ended up attaching my Instagram account. And if you know, look at my Instagram account, it has mostly nothing to do with, uh, you know, with fragrance reviews because I didn't want to confuse the audience that was there by then starting to drop fragrances. Before I stopped, you know, being active on my account, which was about two or three years ago, I had built a following of over 70 something thousand, but because I post sometimes four, five, six times a year, those numbers have been going down. Now, if you go by Dr. Claire's uh, assumption that if you check somebody's Instagram account and you check who, who, who the people are following them, and it turns out that only 10 are fragrance people and the rest are nobody, then they've bought those numbers. No. No, no, we're bigger than that. It doesn't make any sense at all. So yes, do check on Social Blade. Uh, I haven't checked that website. She said, check on Social Blade. If you have a reviewer or a, uh, an influencer that you have doubts over, please check on Social Blade. And uh, hopefully you should be able to get your answers there. Now, enough said guys, let me get into this package. All right, so Latafa reached out to me in January or February, 2024 for the very first time. I'm talking about Latafa, the company itself. They said, uh, we noticed that, uh, I'm going to put the conversation on the side just so that we're on the same page. It was something to do, it was something along the lines of, we noticed that you, uh, talk a lot about our products. We wanted to know whether, you know, you would like us to, we would like to support your channel in any way possible, uh, by sending you products that you may feel you cannot get your hands on, or you feel maybe um, affordable or something like that. And I was happy, you know, for that. And they said, uh, could you tell us the ones you want? Um, and then I sent them a list, right? I have these three fragrances here. I love my, my, but I love to bring evidence, right? This and this and this has already been on my channel. Latafa reached out to me in January or February. I hadn't bought these fragrances, but I even bought them nonetheless. This is just to prove a point that it's not everything that's black and white. I had these. But before they had reached out to me, these fragrances were not in my country. I couldn't access them. So I had actually put them on the list of the fragrances that I wanted them to send me and they included in this haul, okay? Just to show you that it does not automatically mean that everybody is being sponsored. If I was sponsored, why would I have bought fragrances that Latafa was gonna send me anyway? Anyway, let's drop that. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the ones that are duplicates, but this is Ajayib. Let me just make sure that Mimi is as comfortable as possible. Okay, this is the Ajayib that was sent by Latafa. And I had already reviewed Ajayib, right? This is Maya that was sent by Latafa. And I am the one who chose this, right? It's not like they imposed it on me. They asked me, which ones do you want? But remember, they spoke to me in January and then only got back to me in April. So... When they spoke to me and never got back to me, I thought, oh, well, maybe it's probably one of those pranksters or whatever. So I, I, I had just, you know, gone ahead and continued with business as usual. So this is a duplicate of that. You know, it's important before one uses an umbrella term for everybody, it's important to fact check. All right. So I had already bought this and uh, Latafa sent me this. This is a parcel that I actually received yesterday and I'm very happy to say I'm going to be bringing these reviews to you guys uh, soon because these have been sitting in customs for um, maybe 10 days now. So they've been macerating nicely there while customs was waiting to charge me. Okay. Now, receiving merch like this on my part is not free because we pay for it, okay? I'm gonna try and put some sticky notes here to make sure that I cover my, I cover the, the parts that I don't want you guys to see, like my phone numbers, my addresses. Just make sure that I put a sticky note there. I'm gonna cover the company name. Okay, I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna cover that. I'm gonna cover, um, that. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what you need to see, right? So, first of all, it's only, it's only polite for me to say thank you so much to Latafa for recognizing me. Thank you so much to Latafa for reaching out. Thank you so much to Latafa for, uh, you know, asking me if I need any help because I certainly do, right? Uh, the fragrances they sent to me are 12 in total. 
but I'm gonna subtract the three that I had already bought with my money. So we're gonna say nine. Not that I do not appreciate the ones they sent, but these are not gonna make a comeback because we've already reviewed this. If anything, these are gonna, are gonna be you know, a giveaway. I'll have to give these away because I had already reviewed them. But here's the thing that I wanted to point out here, right? So this is what it means when a company sends me stuff. I'm talking about Zimbabwe here. You're gonna see my name there, it says C Chronicles, right? This is the receipt, the invoice that I had to pay. Duty on the fragrances. I had to pay $151, right? I think you can see my name there. Uh, you can see the invoice. I am also gonna put the PDF invoice uh, on the side of the screen so that you see that it's receiving merch, but it's not free. For somebody to say, oh, people are getting discount codes, and well, it doesn't work like that. It's situation specific. It's geographic specific, right? So anyway, guys, Natafa did not send the package in this messy box. This is what our customs does. They will rip stuff apart to just make sure it's as it is. So when I went to collect it, I had to put it in this ugly looking uh, plastic and, and tuck it in and whatever. They were packed nicely. They had my name there. I requested for Teriyak. So guys, this fragrance is coming to the channel. Teriyak, okay, this fragrance is coming to the channel. This is a Quinton Beach creation and I'm happy to own it. So let's open it together, guys. And then I'm not going to uh, sniff it or tell you my thoughts or whatever because this video might take an eternity. How do I even open this? Oh, okay. So you have to take the entire, I have to take the entire, um, the entire plastic out of the way. Okay. I think it's a slide out. What's going on here? Right. Okay. So that's Teriyak for you, right? So thank you, thank you so much to Latafa for sending me this. Remember when I was bringing the Nisha Emirati collection, I kept on saying, oh, I'm gonna one day buy the entire collection. This we already have a review for. I purchased with my own money. Um, this I don't have. Should have asked them for this, actually. This they sent me. This they sent me. This I bought with my own money. This I did not request for, so I don't have. This I did not request for, so I don't have. This was sent to me. And then there's the coming soon there. Uh, this I requested for and they sent it to me. This I purchased with my own money. This I requested for and they sent it to me. Very happy to sniff, especially this one, because this is one of the very popular ones. This I requested and they sent to me. This I bought with my own money. This I bought with my own money. So basically I think from the Niche Emirati collection, I'm missing this one and this one. And that was because I did not ask for them guys, honestly. So there's two that I'm missing. Let's see if there's another one that I'm missing. The third one is this one. I don't have that one. The fourth one is this one. I do not have that one. This I have. This I have. This I have. And I don't have that one. So I'm now missing five from the entire Nish Emirati collection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to, to them to see if they can uh, maybe send me those. So after Latafa reached out to me, I sent them the message after actually receiving the fragrances yesterday. And I said, thank you so much. I asked them if there is a website they would like me to link, uh, you know, for people to buy direct. Uh, and they said, oh no, we don't have a Zim. Uh, we don't have a Zim website. And I said, no, my, my audience are not from Zim. My audience are international. So I then told them that if, you're okay, I can put your website there and uh, then people can be, you know, can just go directly to that website. And if you feel you need to assist in any way, you can, I do have a PayPal link. They did not respond to that. They just said, it's okay, you can put the website. So I am gonna put the website, but I am not being paid by Latafa, guys, please. I'm gonna put Latafa's website um, and, uh, 
what I have received from Latafa are these fragrances that I'm showing you, these ones that I'm showing you. And this is why I even came with a receipt to show you that no, in as much as it's merch, I still had to pay something for it. So anyway, guys, then we have Antique. They sent me this one. It was my request. Um, see, it's got my name there. Okay, so let's see what Antique. Antique looks like. So I'm sorry, guys, if this video had to be this long. Uh, some of the things that uh, people say will trigger you and uh, you will find yourself having to do this, especially when it comes to work. I don't joke with work, guys. Unless, unless, of course, you're just doing it for the fun of it. Some of, it, some of us are actually taking a direction where if this thing can become permanent work, we would very much love to because we are in an economy, in economies that are struggling here. All right, so this is how antique looks, right? It kind of looks uh, very rustic there. I like how it actually speaks antique in its true, true form, okay? Uh, I'm not going to smell, I'm not going to spray these because what I've established about the Niche Emirati collection, guys, is this are uh, oil-based. They're mostly oils. So if you just spray them there like that, um, you're going to have, have the whole house, your hands and everything smelling like this the whole day. So I'm just going to put it back the way it is. Okay, I'm going to do that later. I'm going to put it back the way it is because I'm going to do another unboxing for... Um, for what, what's the name for for Instagram and for TikTok, right? So we've got again, we, we've got Zanzibar. Zanzibar. Zanzibar is one I asked for last minute when they confirmed that they were ready to send the pass. So I just from nowhere thought, do you have Zanzibar? And they said, yeah, we do have Zanzibar. Do you want that one as well? I said, sure. Right. So. So Zanzibar is going to come in a bottle that is very familiar with the other ones that they have created. So this is going to make the fifth bottle because this is the same as the Yara bottle, Yara Tus, Yara Moa and Asad. Okay, the black one. So this one is the blue, comes in a blue one. I believe this is aquatic uh, inspired by uh, Zanzibar, which is, uh, I can't open this. Okay. Tanzania. Yeah, Tanzania, Zanzibar, coast, Tanzania or something. Oh, I haven't opened this one. Okay, so La Antiques, 1886. I did bring you La Antiques, 1921, I think. So this is 1886. I did bring to you Antiques, 1921, that I purchased with my own coins. Let's just show you how this one looks. You know, after receiving this one, I thought to myself, I should have asked for the drama. But anyway, it's an ongoing relationship. So ho hopefully when I do ask for the La Drama, is it the drama or the La Drama or something like that? I do hope when I ask for that, they will be able to, to send me that. Okay, so this is of the Latafa Pride. This is not in Nishi Emirati. And this is not Nishi Emirati. This is from Latafa, but it was done by a very renowned perfumer that Asad Zanzibar so this is how the 1886 looks like righty wow this is how 1886 looks like very nicely done there <laughs> the wheel of the car is actually oh this is nice just Based off the cap, this is really nice. Really, really nice. I like it. I like it. I don't know what it's inspired by. If it is an inspiration, I don't know. Um, you said the wheel of the car. It's protruding. I mean, like, it's actually... Look, that's what I mean. I mean, it's so the creativity in the bottle itself. Okay. The wheel of the car, you can actually see... Is, it's like the, it's like a real real toy. Like, if... if well, I'm just going to use you as an example since you are the one who called the bottle back. Imagine when you were like three or four, you would want to yank this out and tell. Oh. When I was two, three or four, when I, don't you were think four. I, was, I don't think I was still interested in toys at that time. Mm, okay, good. I wasn't for a you. toy person actually. And then there is um, this one, Nish Emirati Remas. Okay, so that's how it looks. Oh. Thank you, Latafa. You know, it's nice to get recognition like this after what? Four years. I opened my channel 2019 December and then 2020, 21, 22, 23. Three years. Imagine. 
three whole years. And I honestly don't blame this company, you know, the way they've been doing things. I don't blame them, you know. And actually, it shames everybody that thought I was getting sponsorship. Because if you go and look at all my Latafas, like some of my Latafas, I literally slag what I do not like. I will still use my nose. That's who I am. Because I'm not here to say buy everything. You know, if these fragrances are nice, I'm going to tell you they're nice. What I like, I'm going to tell you I like. What I think is off, I'm going to tell you is off. What I think is worth it, I'm going to tell you it's worth it. But having said that, it's also important to know that our noses are not the same. Okay, so it doesn't mean that what I say here is set in stone. If I, for instance, do not like this particular one, doesn't mean you're not going to like it. You know, that's what fragrance reviewing is all about. Oh, I love this bottle. Really love this bottle. Nice egg shaped bottle this is pretty i'm going to oh okay the one thing i think they should have done was maybe okay this is i think the top should have been from here because it's very awkward opening just this little tip here it's very awkward like as in you know you, you kind of feel like you're gonna drop it but mm, i like this one i like it remember i told you i have figured out what the niche emirati is all about the niche emirati is about like the creme de la creme like the concentration hundred concentrated fragrances if you are to buy the niche emirati ones and uh they kind of smell like the ones that they've already put on the market there what you need to know about this is like it's so oil concentrated they've lost an eternity a couple of days if you will All right the next one is going to be this one al Dana. This one kind of looks like the antique uh, bottle. Actually, let me take the antique bottle out, isn't it? For the sake of the thumbnail. Dude, this way, sorry guys, if this video is all over the place. Let me take this one out for the sake of the thumbnail because it does help. Okay, let's do it this way and then put it right there. Right, so this is al Dana. It has the same top as that. A different color. I love unboxings, guys. It's like Christmas, you know. And if there's one thing you can ever do for a reviewer that makes them so happy is this. Nothing beats this. would have moved so I have to be careful with it right there okay so it wasn't like this it actually moved in transit so that's how our Dana looks beautiful beautiful bottle I hope this can clip okay yeah it does so that's our Dana for you so we've got that one now now next is Mughal Fort this I have been waiting for this I would have bought even with my own money. Uh, I actually bought Vintage Castle hoping that the seller um, would send me this one because they just advertised Vintage Castle but they put this bottle. So when the Vintage Castle, when my Vintage Castle arrived, that's when I realized, no, this is not the fragrance I bought it. And I just had to live with it. So Mughal Fort, I now have. Okay. I'm opening them like this, guys, because I will have multiple, multiple channels. So I might have to do another unboxing on, on TikTok and Instagram. Okay, so this is how Mughal Fort looks nice nice the bottle is as heavy as vintage castle this is like a weapon i mean if somebody hits you with this you're gone very very heavy i can see why this package was you know very it's very very heavy the tapa doesn't joke when it comes to packaging they they just go all in or nothing all right so that's more girl four okay so i've got two more uh, the second from the last is Al Jah Al Jora. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Al Jora. Okay. All 
Mm, nice. You see already that shiny packaging. I'm a sucker for gold, guys. Anything gold, I'm sold. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so this is gonna look like one of the ones I pulled out. There was one that had like a this kind of cover. Oh my god, Latafa is not joking. I am gonna buy a cupboard just for the Nisha Marathi. If, at all, if, if there's anything, I will do that's the one thing I'll do just for the Nisha Marathi. This is gorgeous. I have no idea how these smell like. These are all blind gifts, all of them blind uh, selected. So I don't know how any of them smell. Even that terrier, no idea what it smells like. So I'm like a kid in a candy store here, waiting to explore and discover. All right, so the last one is gonna be this one. This one is Nish Emirati Tolin. I chose this one instead of the silver one because the silver one has made the rounds as you know purported to smell a lot like interlude so i didn't want another interlude smell alike just in case it's true uh so i chose the the one with the with the garnet like looking you know stones there okay so it's gonna be the last one guys to tolin right and we are certainly having reviews of these ASAP because like I told you, they were sitting there in customs chilling. So I think while they sat there, they did, you know, mix a little. And most of the Nish Emirati actually don't need maceration because these ones are just, they just have the bitters offset. So most of them don't need to macerate or anything like that. So this is Tolin, guys. Just take it out there. Good. Sorry for that. This is totally, this is how it looks. This is one that did not move. These will break anything. This is so, this is so heavy, guys. I wish you could, if you have, if you have this, let me know what you think. These are so heavy, so, so heavy. And they're so special. They're not the sort of fragrances that I just want to mix with all the other fragrances in my collection. They are so, so heavy. So yeah, this was a surprise from Latafa, a pleasant surprise from Latafa. I was not at all expecting this from them. Um, I had been receiving numerous, numerous prank, uh, prank, uh, what you call them, prank messages from stalkers, from whatever, you know, saying, oh, we're from Latafa, we're from Latafa, but, you know, I have an app to sniff that. So that usually just cleans it off when it detects that this is a phony. Uh, but when this one came, uh, it was uh, marked as legit. So I said, oh, okay, I'm going to tell them what I want uh, them to send me and then wait for them to send me and then we'll see how it goes. And then what happened coincidentally is they got so busy, they were not able to send the fragrances immediately. And I thought, oh, okay, could it be that the app got it wrong and they're not Latafa. But then they got back to me around um, Easter and said, no, we're busy uh, with a lot of things, but now we are free to send. Can we send? And they sent the fragrances. The fragrances were sent to uh, Dubai, to my Dubai um, agent. And uh, it was from there, my agent actually got them the following day. And it was from there that they sent them to me. And then uh, they took about, seven to ten days for me to get them so why i'm saying this guys is if for instance uh there is a merch that can be sent to buy it's 10 days two weeks tops south africa is three days but the uk is eight weeks so as long as there's a company that wants to maybe send i am open to that because it's not easy running a channel closing on close to thirty thousand uh subscribers off pocket right uh unfortunately when it comes to affiliate links and uh, sponsorships and stuff like that the only arrangement that can be made is via paypal uh, because i have noticed that yes paypal can get the money across anything else is a bit tricky there so i do not have affiliate links i wish i had 
even if I did have an affiliate link, it wouldn't be benefiting me. It would just be benefiting the company. I am going to drop the Latafa website that they told me to drop, but that doesn't mean I'm getting anything out of it. I am just dropping it there uh, for ease of reference. For those who want to order directly, I'm pretty sure all the details are going to be on that website because that website came directly from Latafa. And it is actually one question that I always get asked by people. How do we order from Latafa? How do we order from Latafa? So if you go in my description box, and if you go in my community tab, and if you go again on my Instagram, I'm going to make sure that I drop those websites there so that you can just go directly. See, Chronicles is my name. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me today. Let's meet in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Which one would you like me to start with as a review? Uh, if you ask me, the one that's shouting to me is this one. So which one would you like me to review first? I would like to know. I'd like to know which one are you voting for first? I vote for Tarek. I vote for this one. But if you want me to, if the votes go against that and they want something else, I'm definitely going to drop in the comment section. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a, it's been a long video, but I hope you stayed through the end. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also watch the adverts, guys. They're the ones that keep this channel going. Please, please watch the adverts. Don't skip the adverts. Turn on post notifications while you're at it. That way you get to be notified anytime I upload a video. And remember that smelling good is a form of good manners. Cheers.